four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to this uh, very special edition of uh, Big Sky 35. Uh, showing off, uh, we're not showing off, showing sort of pictures I took at the Hall of Fame. Um, couldn't take pictures of everything. Uh, after looking at them, I wish I would have got a little bit more of the older stuff. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along here, why. Uh, but, you know, I, I got a lot of the stuff that I really wanted. And I'm planning on going back probably sooner than later to, after talking to my dad today. Uh, so today is Monday, October 23rd. I went on October uh, let's see, 26, 21st. Uh, Saturday, um, got there about nine in the morning, dreary, overcast, sprinkly day, rainy day, uh, just didn't dis detract from going to, cause it was indoors, you know, so, uh, really did not care about that. Uh, it would, yeah, of course it would have been sunnier and that would have been because of the car ride. Uh, I stayed with Mike O. He has a, him and his dad have a, uh, a hunting house, lodge. I don't know what you really call it. I, I don't hunt. Uh, but, uh, you know, the way they made it sound was going to be some little farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't. It was a very nice house, uh, new construction uh, within the 2000s from what Mike was telling me. Uh, a lot of land up in the mountains, just beautiful trees, just the leaves turning. And that, and if it was sunny and chilly, I think crisp fall days, I think that would have been a little bit better. Uh, but the car ride was still beautiful. I, I Now I wish I'd had pictures of that to have shown y'all. I, I really can't explain it, but just beautiful. Uh you know, you're going along the Saska, Saskawana, Saskawana River, I think is how you say it. Uh, a lot of trout fishing and uh, boating and, and, and river, you know, water sports. Uh, so they have other stuff around that area other than just the Baseball Hall of Fame, um, you know, for people to make a whole vacation when they go there. Uh, because... Other than the Baseball Hall of Fame, nothing else really for me around there. Uh, Double Day Field is right there, you know, of course, right right down the street. Uh, and along the road that the Hall of Fame is on, it's all baseball. Uh, uh, it's either uh, apparel or memorabilia, pictures, um, a lot of... Uh, a couple of pizzerias, uh, you know, a couple of diners, uh, candy and ice cream, you know, a touristy spot for sure. Um, you know, I talked about it on yeah on my Sunday night show. Uh, now we know that the Double Day story is a story, and that's it. It's a great story, but it's a story invented by Spalding, um, perpetrated by a few others. Uh, you know, would it be okay to move it? I wouldn't be mad if they did, but I understand if they wouldn't understand why it stays there. Uh, but it's really, it's me and my dad talked today. It is just not an easy place to get. I thought Atlantic city was a dumb place. Uh, air is not like a direct flight your closest flight i think it's an hour and a half from there by car afterwards same way with train bus stops uh you're gonna have to rent a car somewhere along the line if you don't drive from where you're at um but other than that you know it's worth it if you're if you're a baseball fan i mean and when i say fan i don't mean casual fan even though i think the casual fan will love it uh, but if you love the sport, something you watch, dedicate a lot of time to, because um, collecting cards to me is just an extension of baseball. I think many of y'all know that. Um, 
this was something that I've been wanting to do. And uh, when Mike said, hey, I go, I have, you know, I go there, you know, twice a year at least. And uh, so, you know, I, I got to thank you for letting this opportunity happen. And uh, man, him and his dad, I, I couldn't thank him enough uh, for it. And uh, can't wait to go back and uh, hopefully go back in the spring with my dad and, and enjoy it. Uh, he's talking about, you know, I don't need to take off. He can go by himself. But it's something I'd like to go with him to enjoy and listen to him talk about it, uh, the stuff in there and how it affects him. It'd be awesome. Um, you know, it's like seven-hour drive from my dad's house, so drive up, st stay a day there, and he's not wanting to like, stay away from home long periods of time, so, you know, we'll probably start heading back the next day or whatever, but, uh, you know, something to take our time with. Um, but anyway, on with my trip. So, I flew up Friday from Greensboro to LaGuardia to Bington, uh, which is uh, the Rumble Ponies. Mets organization is there. Uh, which was kind of cool. Very small airport. Uh, it used to, you could tell at one time they probably have more flights going in and out, but I, it looks like to me they only go to like Binghamton to LaGuardia. I didn't see much else going on there. Uh, then in LaGuardia to me looked kind of, I thought that was going to be really busy. Uh, not even close to comparable to Chicago, but I guess not many are outside of Atlanta. Uh, so I got to Binghamton on Friday. Mike and his dad picked me up, drove out to their farmhouse. Just, I was in awe. I was, first off, I didn't know exactly where I was at. We were in New York and back in Pennsylvania. And then I felt like we were back in New York and back in Pennsylvania. I was very confused. Uh, but we did that, kind of hung out, watched baseball. Um, which was an adventure with them, with them being Philly f fanatics. It was fun. Um, but then we uh, drove the next day, hour and a half, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Easy drive, straight up 81 to get off the of arrow to Cooperstown. Another 25, 30 minutes on that road. Didn't drive right into town. Parked. We got there right when it uh, it opened, parked right on the side street right there, two-hour parking. Um, it was free, so we ended up moving a few times once for lunch, then came back and then, uh, shopping and stuff. But So I went in. Um, my cat and his dad had to go do something else. I was there for one thing, one thing only, Hall of Fame. Um, I, you know, so that's what I did. I went in. I was wearing my Montreal Expos hat. Uh, a lot of people were talking to me about it. I was wearing my UVA sweatshirt. You'll see it in some of the pictures, what I was wearing. Um, and there's quite a few University of Virginia baseball players in the league now uh, sprinkled around. And uh, so they were talking to me about that. And uh, before I even got in. I mean, the guys that work there are retired. They love baseball. They love to talk. Holy cow. Um, and they remember you. Um, I got my hand stamped. I um, several times in a day left, walked out. You didn't get great cell reception inside, so I kept walking inside to get cell reception. Um, and they remembered me. I mean, it was, it was awesome. Um, so you start on the second floor. You walk right in, huge Babe Ruth uh, display, which it should be. I mean, salt and swat. I mean, not only did he build Yankee Stadium, you know, the house at Ruthville. Uh, I, I kind of he put the sport on the map. He, you know, everybody watching him, the first real superstar really of the game. I mean, there was guys performing with Cobb and some of those other guys that transcended the game a little bit. But not like Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was huge, larger than life. Kids and kids wanted to be him, you know. Uh, men wanted to shake his hand. Women wanted to kiss him. It, 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 it's just the way it was. He could have been president. Uh, you know, made movies and he was in movies. Uh, 
just just you know reason why uh then you walk through and it's a lot of uh, his era and then you start seeing it getting older and older my dad's era uh and then i took a right turn and i thought it was going to be kind of laid out where you walked in eras it kind of was but i thought it would progressively go up uh it did and didn't i, I went through it. it was called how to bait how the game has changed uh you know talked about you know 70s 80s 90s 2000s i love that section i ain't gonna lie that I, it just brought back all my childhood memories uh as soon as i walked in in that room uh it was san diego chicken uh full-size mascot standing right outside of that area that was pretty cool i've seen him several times at richmond braves games he would come you know tour the country uh i went inside and right on this the first screen they had touch screens where you can watch highlights of the era uh in these some of these rooms and i didn't have to touch anything it was just like i was supposed to be there gary carter's first game as a met won it the 10th inning on the home run um that highlight was on the screen um teared up a little bit it hit me uh where i was at i knew where i was at but it hit me then and like it was just like man you were supposed to be here this is this is it and mike comes up right then takes a picture of me uh watching that highlight and uh, just that whole era, they talked, you know, did have steroids, did have the strikes, talked about all of that. Uh, um, you know, they don't leave that history out. Uh, they, they talk about the good with the bad and the bad with the good. It's all part of the game. Uh, had a lot of, like, video games, books, uh, I, I, Johnny Bench Baseball Bunch, um, I watched the thing on that. I, that was how I got to know who Gary Carter was, was through that. Uh, I just was that whole section. I, I was like a kid. I was afraid I was going to miss something, but yet I couldn't see everything at once. So I really had to take a deep breath, slow down, and really look at everything. Um, and that kind of led you out of that area. So I had to you turn it back around because I saw – what looked like Hispanic section, which all uh, I think most of y'all know, I uh, I and I, this is gonna be a long one. I am sorry. This is just as much for me as to keep in my history as as y'all watching it and getting a sense of it with uh, what I was at. But you know, I collect Roberto Clemente, and and I love the I, those stories of the struggle of why these players couldn't play. All the ignorance uh, just amazes me. Uh, you know, uh, the one drawback in that section, it was all in Hispanic in the room, wasn't translated, and my two years of high school Spanish wasn't helping me. Um, <laughs> but I, I got the gist of it. I, I knew, you know, you'll see a picture of, of uh, Clemente's uh, first – professional team he played for in uh puerto rico uh you'll see you know some other pictures of him uh they had like you know manny segui and all, all the, the great hispanics even the great hispanics that never got to the majors uh you know it, it was a really cool section i was not expecting that section and i don't know why it hit me like wow this is cool well all of it's cool uh then after that i walked into the section for women's baseball and even a little bit you know they have a little women's softball in there and things like that and that was cool that was really cool the real uh you know league of their own the real players they have a list of all the ladies that played in that league uh great tribute um and to the now the women coaches we have uh, you'll see I have a picture of uh, Nakin, um, who has a real shot of one day, one day being an MLB manager. Uh, you know, just just awesome. I think we're 
it's great living in history uh, all the way around. Not all of it's good, but you know, when it's good history, it, it's really fun to watch. Uh, so I walked through that section, took my time, really ingested because I don't know a lot about Hispanic uh, early baseball, and I don't know a lot about the. Even though they made movies and documentaries, it's still, you know, a lot of holes in that. Uh, so that was pretty cool. It wasn't huge by any means, but it was cool. Then we looped around, and I got to see, like, they had Mickey uh, Cochran's uh, catching equipment. You'll see that in pictures. Uh, I just thought it was – I was caught. And I was just – I couldn't believe they, that was the equipment. Um, the, the equipment from, man, early baseball just really stuck with me. Me and Mike were talking, the gloves – how good the fielding was with the gloves they were using, um, real spikes. Uh, the bats were not nearly as big as they are now, uh, not as nearly well-made. Um, I'll get more of that in a little while too, but uh, just how the, the balls, you could tell the balls were a little bit smaller in the early days, uh, looked really, really hard. Uh, it it was just amazing and just, you know, them wearing those wool uniforms, just all of that stuff was just very cool to look at. If you played a sport at all, you would have an understanding of like how they played with that stuff uh, and did what they did. It was, it was, I think that's amazing in itself. So then I went up to a third floor. Third floor was like stadiums, the atmosphere of the game when you first walk in. Um, on the first floor, we are, are that's we did after well, I'll get back. So, the third floor was all of that, it had music of the game, um, where you could push different buttons and hear different songs during different eras of baseball. They had Neil Diamond's song on there, uh, Sweet Caroline, uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and some other ones. Uh, and then you walked into the, the that room and to that era of baseball where you get to like modern baseball and uh it's a big collection of Hank Aaron stuff and I thought man this is awesome you had Babe Ruth on the second floor yes Jackie Robinson changed the game for African American players but Hank Aaron is different he's just a different different cat man he he really took it to a different level uh and when you read a story about what he went through the year he broke the record and death threats and all that stuff uh a lot of respect um and i thought it was very well done very well curated just awesome awesome uh then you go around that and they, they start getting into the records and everything you can look in the record books. You can look at lists of most strikeouts. I mean, they had all kinds of lists there. And I talked about it on my Sunday show. Uh, it had, a, you know, if you're in a record book, it didn't matter if you were a steroid user or not because they didn't. They might have cheated. My dad calls them cheaters. And it's like they never missed a game because of for cheating. So I don't know how you call them cheaters. Uh, the hey, guess what? The the commissioner that was during that time frame that knew all that was going on, he's in the Hall of Fame. So all these players are well-documented, pitchers, part of their jerseys, you know, part of their uniforms, just to say, you know, hats, cleats, different items. They're, they're very prominent. They're not excluded from the Hall of Fame when it comes to that, right? Uh, so they're in the Hall. To me, they're in a hall. Just put a plaque downstairs and get it over with and stop with the stupidity. Uh, but I digress. Uh, I, I talked about it last night. I think it's, uh, you know, at one time I was with it. But when I saw that, it changed my mind. It, it really did when I saw that. It, ch it changed my mind. And uh, uh, so I... I uh, Kept walking through there and just they had all the World Series rings, a couple of the trophies. 
the early day trophies I thought were really good. I didn't take a picture of them, but they had the early trophies before the World Series was a thing. Uh, some of the early championships that they made trophies for. Uh, I saw pictures of the first what they call championship game, which was like 1889, I think. Uh, just looking at all that stuff was just awesome. Um, then they had all the baseball cards uh, from 1800s all the way through now. Uh, they had some type of replicate, you know, some replication, some a card, easy for me to say, from pretty much every different card. I saw some cards I've never seen, never seen before. Uh, me and Mike were trying to pick out all the different kinds that we had from one of the displays. Uh, we did hear a guy that, that did say things you hear, right? Do they even make baseball cards anymore? <laughs> Me and Mike both turned around and we're like, is this guy for real? Uh, that just shows you our hobby, how small it really is. Because here's a guy at the Baseball Hall of Fame questioning if they even make baseball cards anymore. Hey, and I, we both, but not every, and we, because me and Mike talk about it all the time, how small we really are as a hobby, uh, but we think we're in this huge thing, but it's just a very small part of this world. Uh, but it was, that was the end of that. We, we went and found his dad, um, went and saw the movie, uh, that got me a couple of times. Started with the Lou Gehrig, Cal Ripken talking about it. Cal Ripken knew that speech by heart, uh, which many people do. I mean, we I think we all do. Know at least the, the gist of it. Luckiest man alive speech. Uh, so that was very good. It was like taking the Ken Burns and drilling it down to a 10-minute video. Uh, but it was very good. Got, if you watched it, they'd like for you to watch it before you get started. It got you geared up to see. I didn't need to be geared up, right? Um, so then we went ate lunch. Uh, I got a Stromboli from a pizzeria down the street. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I guess Mike and his dad got pizza. It was just mediocre uh, slices. Uh, then we kind of went to the shops uh, for a minute. Uh, and I picked up. So they have baseballism. If you ever been to, they're an Iowa place. They're, they started out there by uh, Field of Dreams, making Field of Dreams stuff. And they do, they, they got, they started the banana stuff, uh, which was everywhere there. But I uh, got this hat, 643 equals two. Um, hope I don't never have to explain what that means, especially on this channel. I've been seeing that hat. I uh, subscribe to them. They send emails. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm too big for their shirt line. Uh, then we went to a couple of card shops. There was four or five card shops, huge ones. And that's why, like, I would have liked to go in that area a second day because I would have liked to go on digging around. They had some old stuff in there, like boxes. Uh, it kind of, it was made for a somebody wanted to sit down and just dig through things um of course you're in a tourist area you're going to pay the tourist tax uh things were a little bit higher uh i saw a couple of autographs i would have really liked even one inside the hall of fame which i get to in a little minute and they were all 10 to 50 dollars more than like going rate for similar items out there You got to remember, like, I'm only looking for particular ones, so I'm pretty dialed in to uh, I'm pretty dialed in to uh, what the prices are. So I'm watching the Texas Houston Garcia just hit solo home run. This dude is shit in the heady. Um, but anyway, uh, You know, it, it was really cool just to look around. I didn't buy any cards there. 
they were selling wax. And I tell you what, we were talking. Fanatics would be smart to hook up with some of those stores because in their little, you know, booklet or whatever they sent out things they want stores to be, a lot of those stores are. They sell clothing. They sell, you know, cards. They sell posters. It's not just cards. Uh, there are well-rounded stores. And I'm surprised Fanatics is not hooked up in there. Dave and Adams was closed for the winter. Uh, they're moving as well to another location there. Uh, we were a little upset. We missed them Why they were closed. Because it, it was still, it wasn't elbow elbow crowded there but it was a lot it was a good good number of people there um and there were still people coming in at two three in the afternoon just to take you know probably people that live in the area that might just come over there to look at something you know just for a few hours or eat there's a lot of people there eating at all the restaurants uh so it it, it by the afternoon, it was a good crowd there. Um, I I headed back. Uh, Mike went to move the car, um, him and his dad. Uh, so I, I went back and I, I started in the plaque room. That was the last thing I wanted to spend. Make sure I had enough time because I didn't know what I, I didn't know. I, I, I've seen the plaque room, videos, all that stuff, but I didn't know. And uh yeah, I did spend some time in there. And um, to me, though, the upstairs was more where it got me in the feelings than the plaque room. The plaque room to me is nice to look at, to see who's in the hall, read about some people you might not know much about, get it, make you want to go learn more about some of these people. But it's very, uh, I don't know what the word is, static. It, it's just not much going on. Not a lot of energy. People are happy. A lot of picture taken. Um, you're not supposed to touch the plaques. Uh, uh, I did take, uh, you'll, you saw I took quite a few pictures of some plaques of guys I collect and people I really admire. A um, couple of plaques I took pictures of just to send to friends that I knew. Uh, Follow, they followed or collected when we were kids. Uh, took a plaque. I took a picture of a plaque to mess with uh, Wesker Griff. Uh, sent him a picture of it. Uh, but yeah, they had also. I found this little hallway off, like in the middle of the plaque room, to go to this other, their old video room, I guess. And uh, they had this whole thing for the people in the media they got the frank ward or whatever um I, I thought they should take a little bit more time and do something more with that i think announcers are a big part of this game and writers are a huge part from the early days of this game um i don't think they they give that area enough respect they do have a cool little little thing in there about movies and TV for baseball. Uh, you'll see that I have one of the pictures of a list of every movie. I plan on trying to see all those movies. Uh, seen most. We, me and Mike and his dad are talking about it. Uh, then they were out there at right. At, then they got a little bookstore. I don't think Mike's ever seen that one. Uh, so. It's the old part of their of the museum. Uh, I was a little let down. They didn't have any books about the Hall of Fame or more history oriented books. Uh, it was a lot of biographies and you know, not even really about teams. Uh, you know, the ones I have, I have. I already saw a lot of them. I already have. Uh, so. Um, it was pretty cool. Still, uh, a lot of postcards, looking at the postcards. Uh, they had a little room for kids to hang out and play in. Uh, only spent about 20, 30 minutes in there playing. Um, but anyway, uh, they did have a Casey Stingle, his retirement jersey from the Mets was hanging up in there. 
uh, which I thought was weird. Uh, went back to the, like I said, this is long. I'm sorry, folks. Might be bad one. Went back to the the plaques and, and took a picture of the original group plaques and then went over and uh, found Gary Carter just smiling. You know, I, I just never thought I'd ever get there. It was a place I always wanted to go and I needed a reason to go uh, because where it's at, it's just, you know, it's a destination spot. <laughs> and uh, I always wanted to go. And uh, now it's made me want to do other things that you just got to do it. And uh, so I went there, Mike and his dad come up, Mike takes some pictures of it. I tell Mike, so we walk out to the, uh, or Mike just walks up. We're trying to find his dad. We walk up to um, back to where they're selling their stuff, the, the stuff there. We talk a little bit. We go back in. And every time I go back in, I go to two plaques. Now, I've already seen all the plaques. I go back to Johnny Bench, and I go back to Gary Carter. And, uh, and I keep, and I'll stop and want to catch my eye, and I read a lot about it. Uh. <laughs> I love listening to conversations of families that are talking about the players. Yes, I know it's not good to listen in on conversations, but these were really good conversations. I just kept my mouth shut. And if I'm in the earshot and I can hear it, is it really bad? Uh, really enjoyed those. Really. Nobody spoke negative. It was all happy. You saw Mets fans, Philly fans talking. You saw, you know, it was a lot of fans from the Northeastern area. That, that's why I kind of uh, keep questioning where it's at. Uh, you know, uh, if you hear that buzzer, I don't know where it's coming from. I can't figure it out. I think it's upstairs. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, uh kind of threw me off what I was talking about. The plaque room, I didn't end up going back in and out. And then I ended up going into the uh, uh, the gift shop. Well, I knew I was going to get a hat because I can't fit into shirts. I'm glad because I would have probably walked out with a few shirts. Um, they were really, I, I saw some of the Mets and I, I couldn't, there was a Philly one I thought Mike should have got, but I ended up getting this. Mike told me about this. I saw him, and I'm glad he did tell me about it. I hope this comes up. Uh, it's the glass uh, of of his plaque of Gary Carter. Uh, they had bench as well. I think they have Frank Thomas and King Griffey. They don't have all of them, which is surprising to me. And Lee Smith is a discount for everything. Uh, so I did get that, and, and I picked up this hat. Uh, and I kept the bag. Anything a Hall of Fame, I kept the box that this came in. Uh, I got to find a, a spot for this. But I plan on getting a couple more of these, a bench, at least a bench one. And this was uh, $49.99 for this, so it wasn't like it was highway robbery. They had a couple other things I was really interested in. Uh, you know, my younger days, uh, I probably would have bought everything with Gary Carter and Johnny Bench and Kyle Ripken. They had a Johnny Bench auto pitcher there that was an artist pitcher, was fantastic. But that was one of those things they were just asking way too much for. So I passed on it. Um, they had cards in there. I was looking through those. Uh, man, they had some awesome hats. But speaking of hats, so we ended up finally leaving there. Go to a car. Me and Mike are talking. Hey, there's a few more shops I really like to hit before we take off. We want to get back so we can eat and watch the relax and watch the ball game. I'm uh, they got stuff they got to do Sunday. I just want to sleep. Uh, so we get we get in the car. We stop at a couple shops. We stop at a shop, uh, Mickey Mantle's shop. I don't think it has anything to do with me. I just think it's named after Mickey Mantle. They did have a section of Yankee stuff in there. I didn't hold that against them. But they had a wall of hats, of baseball hats. Uh, and 
you name it, old school, new school, uh, Negro leagues, uh, Hispanic leagues, they had it. Uh, a lot of minor league. Uh, so I did pick up a new Expos hat. My other one was getting grimy. Um, so I picked up the uh, the blue one. I don't have this one. The other one I have is a different panel version that I have, an alternate. And then I've been looking to get this. I wanted it in the postseason, but I'll take it in this, the Twins, their Twin City uh, alternative hat that they wear for when they wear the Twin Cities jersey. Um, this year, I don't know if it's their city jersey or whatever it's called. But I, I did pick up four hats while I was there, uh, even with my big noggin. I could find hats that fit me. Uh, that's not a problem. And I got the plaque. Um, that was it uh, for for there, picking up stuff. Went in a lot of card shops. Uh, I just knew they were kind of pricey. We didn't have time to go digging around in them, in the boxes and stuff. Uh, but, you know, there's always another day. And, and there's car. I, it's not like we were missing out on anything. They did have wax, and they were reasonably priced on the wax. We were really shocked. I don't know if the pricing for Fanatics has kicked in yet or what, but uh, nobody was really jacking up prices. Uh, we see now and again there and Pro Debut for what or less that's going on on the big three on 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 a uh, Bregman just went yard. Uh, the big three on internet. So we thought that was pretty cool. Um, we kept debating because we wanted to open up something. Mike had a bunch of mosaic. He brought a bunch of mosaic uh, football we opened. And I did end up on Sunday. Uh, I slept Sunday. He was dead. Uh, went out, ran some errands. They did some work around their house there. Then we got and uh, went into town. They needed to pick up some stuff, but we wanted to hit a couple of stores, card shop. I saw that there was a uh, video game store, and oh my god, it was awesome in uh, Vestal, New York, uh, outside of Birmingham, uh, Binghamton. Um, definitely, uh, when I go back up there, I'll stop by there, make a trip to that. Um, just uh, re really, really uh, enjoyed it. Um, then came back, we watched football and baseball, made a video. Then I got up at 3 in the morning, and uh, we made uh, a uh, 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 airport. was only 30 minutes away. Uh, we left his house at 3.30, dropped me off a little after 4. And uh, I was back in Greensboro by 9.30, uh, and I was in Winston-Salem at 10. In bed by 10.30. <laughs> I slept till by 3.30. Uh, so, uh, make it up for the weekend, but, uh, as you can see, I'm still smiling. I, I don't think I've stopped smiling. Rain be damn, um, negativity be damn. Uh, the only emotions I had were happy emotions. Uh, this was not a card weekend for me. Again, that's kind of why I wasn't in card purchasing mode. Uh, you know, I was about baseball. I was back to sport. Yes, and cards are part of it for us, but uh, it was just different. And and I mentioned this before. What what this thing what has happened. And thanks for y'all hanging in with, with me if you got this far. So if you know how I collect, it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, modern, which I'm not going to stop doing. Uh, the only thing is I've talked about it. Peter Alonzo, I don't know how modern I'm going to be. I, Pio Alonso just goes to another team that I, I just can't stomach, which is good, good, good possibility. I probably still collect this Met stuff, maybe, but I'll be going. I think I'm going to start collecting more of guys that are retired that I really like. Uh, if I want to super collect and put money into it, because I just can't see me keep doing this. Uh, you know, I did it with Syndergaard, I did it with DeGrom. Uh, now I've gone really overboard with Pete Alonzo because I thought he would be a forever Met. I just couldn't see him leaving. Uh, but now he's got Boris and anything can happen. Uh, so, but 
but going through this really put in perspective some things for me. Um, you know, I, I love history. And, uh, you know, there's some cards that I really want out, out there of catchers that are in, uh, you know, that would be vintage. Am I going to be a vintage collector? Far from it. But I think I'm going to start looking more and more at some vintage cards. Um, Cochran, uh, Campanella, um, you know, even Yogi Berra. I, I've, I've got some Yogis. Uh, Carl Fisk, which is, you know, not really crazy vintage, but 70s is now vintage. Uh, you know, some of the bigger name catchers of different eras. Uh, I like to have some representation of those guys in my collection and also ticking off some different cards in those collections. Uh, so are different cards from different years that I don't, don't have in my collection. So that that's kind of what I was talking, alluding to Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, man, if y'all have any questions, I know I left out things. My brain, I, I tried to wait. Uh, I've been in a fog most of the day today. I've been run down, just tired. Uh, all my, it was just like when I, I got off the plane, all the energy today just left me. Uh, I've been in walking on sunshine all weekend and, uh, I want to hang on to it as long as I can. Uh, you know, you have that national hangover. I kind of have a Hall of Fame hangover. And I want to hang on to it as much as I can. So please let me know uh, what y'all think down below. Any questions, any thoughts, uh, you know, anything. Um, yeah. So until next time, like, share. Subscribe if you haven't. A couple, I was at 600. A couple of people uh, decided they wanted to unsubscribe, which is fine. Uh, so I just need to get those back. A couple of people. Uh, and uh, we'll see. Uh,